Hey everyone, welcome in this seventh presentation where we're going to learn about the biology, the communication and the sociology of orcas. First of all, let's have a look on the shape and the colors. Here is the body of orcas and this body is perfectly made for swimming in the ocean. It looks like a huge torpedo and you can see also this large pectoral fin and these pectoral fins are made to control the direction. And also on the top of the back, the dorsal fin, which is a kind of foil to stabilize the swim. Back to this uh, body is the fluke, and this fluke is a powerful fluke for swimming very fast. The colors now, the orcas is black and white. The back is black with a gray saddle patch. And you can see the eye patch close to the eye, which is white, and the belly, which is white also. We can easily recognize the male from the females. First, with the dorsal fin. The males, they have a very high and straight dorsal fin. It can be almost two meters tall. The female, compared to the males, have a shorter and curved dorsal fin, which is approximately 60 centimeters or 80 centimeters. The second thing to recognize the males and the females are the pectoral fin. The males have much larger pectoral fins. And then also we have a third way to recognize males and females, but for that we have to watch the belly and the distance between the urine orifice and the genital orifice, which is larger to the males and shorter with the female, and you can see also the place for milking. Inside this body, there are organs, and they are the same organs we humans have, or all the mammals have, because they are mammals. They have a brain, they have lungs, they have liver, they have stomach, intestine, everything is the same, same organs. Let's have a look on the skeleton. We can first see this long, strong and powerful spine with very large vertebrae. This spine is very flexible to transfer the power to the fluke for the swimming. Then we can see also the ribs, very large ribs for very large lungs, separated by the sternum. Close to the sternum, we can see something looking like a hand. And actually, it is a hand inside the pectoral fin. And they have almost the same bones than we have in the fingers. Close to the middle of the body, there is what is remaining from the pelvic bone. It's a very, very small bone. And last but not least, just look at this skull. This skull has a powerful jaw and powerful teeth. This teeth and this jaw are made to crush the prey. Let's have a look on the, some numbers about orcas. First, the size. The size for the males is between six and eight meters, with a max of 10 meters. For the females, the size is between five and seven meters, with a maximum eight meters. And the newborn are about 2.4 meters. The weigh is between five and eight tons for the males, with a maximum of 10 tons. Between three and four tons for the females, with a maximum five, six tons. And the newborn are about 180 kilos. Lifespan is interesting, estimated in the wild at about 30 years for the males and 60 years for the females. We have to be careful with this number because there is a lot of information we don't have. We know in British Columbia a female and she was 104 years when she died. So it was one case and it doesn't impact the, the average uh, lifespan, but um, there is a lot of orcas everywhere in the world. There is a lot of data uh, we miss. So we have to be very, very careful with this lifespan. Into the wild, the mortality in the six first month is between 35 and 50 percent. It's huge, and it's mainly due to the human activities. Actually, the mother orcas they are poisoned by the pesticides, and when the mother is milking the baby, they go into the milk. So while the mother is detoxifying herself, she is poisoning the baby, and the baby is a fragile organism and this has a huge impact on the immune system. So um, this is a huge mortality and this is not natural at all. Gestation is between 15 and 18 months. The weaning occur between 12 and 24 months. But we witness in Norway that the, the orcas actually start to feed with the herrings, the, the newborn, uh, much before the end of the, the milking period. Body temperature is between 36 and 38 degrees, exactly like or 
body temperature. They are mammals, that's why. And it's very interesting to understand that they have the same enzymatic system, and this enzyme, they have to work with a very specific temperature. And they have to keep this body temperature that high, even in the cold sea, in the freezing Arctic or Antarctica. And this is the reason why the orcas, they need a lot of food. If you compare one orca, uh, same size with a white shark, for instance, let's say five meters average. And um, the white shark in South Africa will maybe eat one pup of seals each week or two weeks, while in the same time, uh, orca in the same size will need maybe two or three per day. So this, the reason is because the orca need a lot of energy, much more energy to keep the body temperature in this level. Sexual maturity is between 15 and 20 years for the males, and after 10 years for the female, with a peak of fertility about 20 years. The maximum speed of orcas is estimated at about 60 km per hour. There is only three creatures living in the ocean that can be faster. The mako shark, that can be up to 100 km per hour. The saltfish and the tuna. But the difference is that the orcas, they have amazing stamina and they can keep a very high speed for a long time, while the others, they are more sprinters. Until recently, we thought that the orcas could reach 300 meters maximum while diving. And actually, recently, we had a report of a tagged orca fishing on the two fish in Pacific. And the depth was 1,087 meters. They can dive very deep if they need. Some words about the classification. They belong to the animal kingdom. The phylum is Chordata. The class is Mammalia. Order is Artiodactyla. Infraorder is Cetacea. They belong to the family of the Delphinidae. And the genus is Orsinus. There is only one species in this genus, which is Orsinus orca. They are the largest member of the Delphinidae family. And we can split this family in two parts. The Delphininae, which are the beaked dolphin. The dolphin with the beak, such as the bottlenose dolphin, common dolphin, uh, white-sided dolphin, all these are the delphininae. And the globicephalinae, and the orcas, they are globicephalinae because they have a melon. And they, in this family, you have also the pilot whales, the false orca, the resource dolphin. So they are belonging to the delphinidae family. Some element of the sociology, the orcas are living in a family group. The oldest female of the group is living with the sons and the daughter grandsons, granddaughter, grand-grandsons, grand-granddaughter. The orcas, they don't mate inside the family group. They are mating outside the family group. And the result is that one orca will never live with his father. He will live with the oldest female called the matriarch. We call that the matrifocal group. A newborn will always live in the intimate zone of this mother the first month we know that the mother gives the culture, transmit the knowledge to the, to the newborn by being close to him. But it's the whole pod who is also taking care of the newborn and the juveniles and transmitting the culture. One question is, what happened when the oldest female die? Actually, we have to remember that before being the oldest female, she was the daughter of a matriarch. So when the oldest female die, each daughter is becoming the matriarch of his own offspring. Let's enter in the communication system of orcas, which is totally fascinating. We know that the orcas, they have a vocal language, they make sounds. I have been studying the body language of orcas for many years, and they have a complex and very interesting body language. They also have a verbal language. They use basic sounds they can combine. And this is the definition of a language. And all these way of communicating are described in the Merabian equation. Vocal language, verbal language, body language. But what I suspect now, after all this year of uh, underwater encounter, that they also use emotional channel. They can communicate emotion to each other. And we can feel this emotion when we are diving close to them. If you remember the second presentation called the base of UC, in the example of uh, UC level 3 interaction. It was a big female, a matriarch, interacting with the divers, and you could see her visiting the divers, singing, and also emitting sounds. You could see this female, when she was emitting sounds, some bubbles getting outside the blowhole. Actually, she's squeezing uh, air in the nasal bag. This is why we can see she's the one who is singing. Recently, my good friend Tony Mayer, 
show me drone footage of an orca male swimming in the last position, the one we are calling the pusher. And this uh, footage is really interesting because we can see the body language of this orca male pointing in the direction with the head. And you can see some bubbles getting outside the blowhole. And then this orca will turn a little bit in the right and some bubbles are getting outside the blowhole. When I saw this footage, I understood immediately what we couldn't suspect before. The orcas, they are communicating to each other. And this guy, the pusher, actually is giving commands in the young orcas swimming in front of him. And he's choosing one in the left, one in the right. And he's speaking all the time. What we couldn't see, we couldn't suspect by being in the boat at the same level, is that they actually are communicating to each other all the time. What are made on this communication? There are sounds. And the most obvious sounds we can hear are the whistles. They are whistling. The range of frequency is from 0 0.5 and 40 kilohertz. They use this whistling uh, for close range communication. Second sort of sounds we can hear are the pulsed call. They are a little bit lower in frequency and it can be used in a group recognition where they are herding the herrings or also when they coordinate their behavior, especially when they are hunting. Actually, these sounds are a dialect. A dialect is the sum of the calls used by the population of orcas. Each population of orcas around the world, they have their own dialect using sounds. For example, the Norwegian orcas, they have 23 repertory calls while the neighbor in Iceland, they have 24. They are not the same because it's not the same population. Watch this spectrograph of a sound. You can see that there is first a pulse call, then you're gonna have a click seri, and at the end of a click seri, a whistle. What is interesting is that you see that the whistle in the graph is four lines of frequency, while the click seri has a range of frequency between 5 and 50 kilohertz. And it's a very short sound. It's between 1 and 5 milliseconds. This sound is used for the echolocation. They are emitting a sound, and they are waiting for the echo back, and then they can have a picture of the environment. Even if the target is deep, even if the water is trouble, uh, they can see with the sound. Again, another sound. Whistle. Another whistle. And the click series. This unique communication system added to the echolocation system permit to the orca to be in relationship in their environment. They use this sound system to communicate and to echolocate, especially when they are hunting. When you see an orca pod traveling, you can see orcas in front, orcas in the side, orcas behind. They are breathing at the surface one after the other. But when they are hunting, the orcas, they are on the line. It's because they are using the echolocation system. It has a sense. If, for instance, they are herding herring or they are looking for herring uh, and they are spread out and uh, they are swimming in random. Some orcas, they will not have the information in the same time than the others because they are behind and in front of them, it's going to be an orca. Instead, when they are hunting in a line, they are all echolocating together and they are all receiving the echo back. 
We have to understand that the orcas they are using the sound underwater and the sound speed underwater is not the same than in the air. In the air, the sound is transmitted at the speed of 330 meter per second. In the water, the speed is 1440 meter per second. So it means that when the orcas are at the surface and they are echolocating at the bottom, if the bottom is at 700 meters, they will receive the echo back one second later. They will have all of them all together in the same time, the information back one second later. For that, they have to coordinate and they are whistling for that. They are giving information to each other. It's a very complex organization to be efficient, to use this communication system. We know they are speaking, we know they have a language, but we cannot measure the level of communication because we don't understand this language. So are they intelligent or not? Is it a high level of intelligence or not? We used to uh, compare the intelligence of humans with the other living creatures. We are making tools, we are making computers, we are building houses, we are building the boats, we have radars, we have cars, we have constructions, building. We can make everything, so it's the evidence of our intelligence. But anthropozoologists, when they were speaking about intelligence, they were using a very simple fact. The fact is that the humans, they have a bigger brain than the other animals. For instance, with some creatures with a basic social life, such as mice, they have a small brain because they have a basic social life. And with some monkeys, for instance, or with some apps, they have a bigger brain and they have, a, let's say, a more complex social life. And if you compare the brain of an app and the brain of a human, you will see that the human has more loop and is bigger than the app. And this is how we explain the fact that we had the tool, the power to be intelligent. And one day, one person had this uh, idea to open the skull of a dolphin. And then what he could see was remarkable. A bottlenose dolphin has a bigger brain and more loop inside. And one day one person opened the skull of an orca and it was even bigger. Does it mean that the orcas are more intelligent than us? We don't know that. We don't understand what they say. Six kilo versus 1.5 kilo. Remember that people explained that Einstein was a genius because he had a 1.6 kilo brain. 100 grams more. Imagine a brain six kilo versus 1.5 kilo. They have a huge brain and in the nature there is nothing existing without a reason. If they have this size brain, it has to be a reason. Some people say yes, but they are bigger, so they have a bigger brain, bigger organ. This is not the reason. Let's take the example of the Nile crocodile, which is also a very big predator. Uh, they have a small brain, but they are bigger. If we check in the past, uh, for example, the T-Rex, he was also a top predator. He was an apex predator at that time, but he had a smaller brain, despite the fact he was almost 10 tons like orcas. And it's not only the size of the brain. Dr. Lori Marino, which is a neurobiologist, has scanned the skull of orcas. And what she found out is remarkable because uh, we human, we have a place in the brain called the limbic brain, which is dedicated to emotions. The orcas, they have an extra lobe called paralimbic brain meaning that they are even more uh, emotional creatures that we can be. This confirmed me the fact that I felt uh, what I felt when I was diving with them, that they are communicating emotions. Speaking about intelligence, we have to think in terms of non-manipulative intelligence. We humans can prove our intelligence because we are building tools because we have hands. And this is a manipulative intelligence. Intelligence must have different, different fields. It can be social intelligence, it can be environmental intelligence, emotional intelligence. It's not only mathematic intelligence. And to understand this concept of intelligence, we have also to be open to what we call the non-manipulative intelligence. The orcas, they will never build something because they don't have hands, they have pectoral fin instead. So that doesn't mean they are not intelligent. And for me, they are really intelligent. They can solve problem. Uh, we have seen the, how they have changed the um, hunting strategy. They are really intelligent also because they are in balance in their own environment and we are not in balance anymore. We are changing this balance and we are impacting very much uh, the life on earth now that we know for sure. All your experience, all your footage, all your pictures of interaction uh, are helpful. You can contribute and become contributors of our Facebook page called UC Orcs Sans Frontières. 
You can ask for being a UC ambassador and it's going to be a great honor for us to include you in our staff of ambassadors. If you organize some events, seminars, workshops, works about the orca behavior or also the uh, how to come close with orcas, we're going to be uh, really happy to take part of it or any other suggestion you may have. Let's speak about intelligence in the next time and also let's enter a little bit more in this field of the sound in the next presentation. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Thank you for your attention and see you soon. Bye.